Now, of course, I've been banging on, haven't I, about illegal immigration across the channel. Another 539 that crossed yesterday, hundreds more again today, and it will go on and on. But tonight I want to talk a little bit about legal immigration, because it turns out that through the student visa programme, the number of Nigerian students who've then been able to bring a dependent relative in this country runs at about one for one. You know, 34,000 Nigerians given student visas and 32,000 dependents coming in their wake. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment there's anything illegal about this, but when you think that a total of 1.1 million visas of various kinds were given out last year, you begin to understand why the British population has risen by 10 million since the year 2000, and 85% of that is due to immigration. Now, no one's suggesting that there aren't some great people coming into this country, because there are some great people coming into this country. But a rise of 10 million, it's completely out of control. Well, joining me is somebody of Nigerian descent. He's a regular on GB News. Hi. And Dr. Emeka, you, I mean, you appear on all of our programmes. You are... Uh, absolutely proud of your Nigerian heritage Correct. and your British present and you're Correct. there in the health service and you're doing great stuff and that's great and we yeah. love that but when you look at these numbers I mean frankly if every single person that comes from Nigeria as a yeah. student is then allowed to bring a dependent relative it's a bit of a joke isn't it um I, I wouldn't say that I think you, you have to understand where these people are coming from imagine leaving your country your home country your whole family, you're coming to a new country in you know, a search of better education, better jobs, a better lifestyle. You can't just leave everyone there. You also want to bring people in there so they can also develop in that country as well. And being somebody who was um, a product of that, because when I came many, many years ago, my dad came as um, a doctor, as a surgeon, to come work here in the NHS. At that point, myself and my siblings, we were dependents, we were young, we couldn't work, we were just... Um, living at the time, we didn't have citizenship. We had to wait and get our British passports. And then we were able to go through the system. And I was able to school here, go to medical school here. My sister was able to school here. No, you've done very here. well. You've done incredibly well. And, 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 and that's terrific. And that's an example we've been exactly in that of how position. this can work. What I'm saying when to it you, works. what I'm saying to you is, what are the, you know, there you are working for the yeah. NHS. One of the reasons we've got a 6.7 million waiting list is that our population has exploded totally out of control. Control. We don't actually have the health service, the schools, the roads to cope with a population rising like this. It's true, but then when, <clears throat> when you think of what these students are studying and what they're contributing to in society, then it makes it seem a little bit more logical. Because if you think about the NHS, around 15% of the NHS are people who don't identify as British. And that's not to count people like myself who have British citizenship, citizenship a British passport, but I'm also dual nationality because I'm Nigerian. So then you think about this, in London, 27% of people working in the NHS aren't British, and Nigerians are the third most populated country from outside the EU that come so and we're actually saying, drive so the we're NHS saying the poor countries will strip out your talent, will take away your nurses and doctors. They're probably more needed there, aren't they? Um, well, I wouldn't call them poor countries. I call them developing economies. And secondly, these people who come here and study here also have their opportunities to go home and give their talents back. So my, my plan, obviously, is to do a lot back in my country. I was trained here in the UK. I was fortunate enough to be given the resources to study here and work in the NHS, which is great. And then I've seen how healthcare systems can work. And then I'm trying my best to so go back see, and implement so you it see, there too. you see absolutely no problem with this. Nigerian citizens account for 40% overall of all dependents who accompanied foreign students in the 12 mm. months of the year. Does it strike you as a bit odd that one country should be 40% of all dependents that come accompanying students? No, I think it's because of our culture and how we see it. I think we, we really value it when we're, it's very difficult uh, for a Nigerian who's studying in Nigeria to be able to get a student visa or get a working visa here. And when we do, we want to obviously make the best of it. And that's providing a better life for yourself and your family and thinking that your family can go through a system with the kids who have grown up here and develop and possibly give back to our country if we can. Well, never let it be said. Yeah, we don't allow both sides of the argument. on yep, this program. Correct. And you've done a great job. And we love Thank people you. like you coming here. But I'm just suggesting. I understand. There has I understand. to be an upper limit somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, thank you. We'll see you again on GB News very, very soon.